I have, for a ridiculous reason, decided to go for a cycle. It's not ridiculous, I need to do some exercise, so this is it, exercise time. And I also want to talk about a movie that I watched the other day called Don't Look Up. Good movie, enjoyed it. Ah, can't get my foot in. Oh, that's not good. Come on. There we go. It's been a little while since I've been out on the bike. Clearly. Oh, this hell's a killer. So, this movie, Don't Look Up, is basically a uh, documentary on climate change. In this movie, sorry about the light by the way, uh, basically, uh, a couple of scientists discover a comet that is heading towards Earth. And it's a 97% chance that it's gonna impact. And this is confirmed by other scientists globally. And so, fundamentally, the world sort of just doesn't take it seriously. And by the time they do take it seriously, the comet is minutes from impact. And everyone is basically dead. Uh, as I watched it, it's got Leonardo DiCaprio in it, and I know he's a bit of a militant climate change activist type person. Uh, then it became apparent fairly immediately that this was really about climate change. The only thing that was different is they'd picked a comet because a comet is much shorter term than large scale climate change. And I suppose like the movie, people don't really sort of take climate change that seriously. Oh, hang on a minute, I need to change gear. I'm just puffed going downhill. I don't even have to pedal and I get puffed. One thing that they did get right in this movie, I think, is that climate scientists are in fact getting a little bored of not being listened to. So much so, in fact, that some of them have suggested a moratorium on further climate research until the research that has already been done is taken seriously by the world. Now, I know there's various commitments to reduce greenhouse gases, but none of those actually are gonna work, not, not on their own. They might buy us more time, but they're not in and of themselves a solution because they all basically just involve continuing to produce far more CO2 than the environment can capture. So eventually, calamity. Yeah, that's uphill. It is so cold. That really is one of the big issues I'm facing at the moment. Now, for the avoidance of confusion, I am not somebody who thinks that modern life has got to stop and we have to go back to the Stone Age in order to save planet Earth. <sighs> Although, technically that would work, it wouldn't be a life that was much worth living. I think as a society, we'll go to the wall before we uh, give up on the niceties of life. No, I think the answer has got to be finding a way to, oh, I hate this phrase, have your cake and eat it. Now, ironically, when it comes to the climate, that is possible because there is so much energy that comes down from that thing. It's a huge whopping nuclear reactor in the sky and it never turns off and it doesn't create any carbon emissions. In fact, energy from the sun powers the exact opposite of that. So the problem is obviously the sun doesn't shine all day long, which is actually nonsense. The sun shines all day, every day. It doesn't take any time off, not for even a second. So you think it'd be the perfect power source. The problem is somebody made our planet spin, which is also good because it means we have a day cycle and seasons and all that sort of thing. But, it does mean that any one place on Earth will not be facing the sun for the entire day. So, how do we get around this? Well, my humble suggestion 
would be superconducting cables. I have mentioned this in the past, but basically, if you created a ring of superconducting cables around the Earth and positioned loads of solar panels on that superconducting ring and then just sort of piped off to all the different countries and continents, you could power the whole planet with sunlight and you'd have as much energy as you want for basically anything or at least anything we can dream up at the moment and it's not entirely fanciful any either I mean superconducting cables they're actually testing those in Japan it's a train company I believe the science is sound we could do it the problem is it would cost a lot of money and it would be a massive massive infrastructure job but it would really move things forward I mean it really really would as a species we'd have moved on to something wholly more sustainable now of course there are many other different ways that the same sort of thing could be achieved and I'm not suggesting we don't invest in other renewables or grid storage or anything like that but I think a big sensible well thought out science led project to save the earth is not necessarily a bad thing in the face of climate change because the problem is by the time most people start thinking oh yikes we need to do something it will be too late far too late and whatever the climate does we will have to live with right I'm about to go downhill so I'm gonna put the camera down now look at that the sun's facing me now so I'm not just a silhouette oh you know it's been a couple of weeks and you can really tell at the moment my average speed is sitting at 15 and a half miles an hour which to be fair isn't being helped by uh you know vlogging with the climate i just the thing is these sort of placebo type things that we do which yeah they make a difference but they don't fix the climate issue you know man-made global warming it's just not solved in fact why are we calling it a climate crisis it's global warming the planet is getting hotter this is irrefutable science fact now yeah it could be global warming for natural reasons then uh how come it matches perfectly to our carbon emissions at the moment you know just coincidence you know over tens if not hundreds of thousands of years we just happened to dump a load of pollution in the atmosphere at the same time as the planet was warming up anyway it's mad totally bonkers at least being this unfit I've got myself good and hot and I'm not feeling the cold too much <laughs> I'd have thought the road might be a bit drier though with all this sunlight uh oh gear change again it's supposed to be turning soon oh, so gorgeous so pleased I decided to come for a cycle even though it is painful as somebody who drives a Tesla it is painful for me to admit that even driving EVs isn't going to make a jot a difference in the grand scheme of things although I would like to point out that driving EVs is an enabler because if everyone's driving petrol and diesel cars and then all of a sudden we have a limitless amounts of electricity it's uh you know not gonna work is it if we decide that small nuclear reactors are the way to go that's fine no problem or wind power not an issue or solar so yeah EVs still worth it but just by driving one it's not really gonna you know affect anything much not globally now what will affect things globally is if we can get a hundred percent of our energy from the Sun which is ultimately where all energy comes from of course but just let's try and not use the stored stuff in the ground how is it that so many people can't see the writing on the wall I mean I suppose it's not a problem that we will probably have to face the full impact of in our lifetimes 
or maybe even our children's lifetimes. But at some point, this problem is gonna come a calling and it's gonna need fixing. And we're gonna run out of fossil fuels anyway, one day. So ultimately, we might as well get on with it. Dumbest experiment in history. I think Elon Musk said those words and he was right. Sorry about this being quite a preachy vlog episode. Just seems to have turned out that way. It wasn't my original plan, <laughs> to be honest. It's probably quite a good idea coming out on the bike when I feel like having a bit of a rant about something because the effort required to pedal this thing means that I always have a slightly look on my face. Slightly. <laughs> I'm gonna concentrate on the cycling for the next 10 miles. So I've done about half of it now. I'm only gonna do a short one, 20 odd miles. Definitely prefer smaller roads. Much more relaxing and pretty. Hey RB. My bike needs a little clean. Okay, so that was a fun 21 miles in an hour and 20 minutes for a 15.7 mile an hour average, which is quite honestly appalling, but it's okay. It's the uh, first ride of the season for me, so. Yeah, the season. <laughs> Makes it sound like I'm some kind of professional or something rather than just a plucky amateur. Right, anyway. Um, yeah, so, not gonna be saving the world on my bicycle, unfortunately. But, on the upside, well, we can definitely do it. Well, we, we really can. Big projects are possible. I mean, for goodness sake, we built the pyramids with stone, like tools virtually, well, bronze actually. But still, you know, there's like proper primitive tech and we still built giant great mountains of stone. So, superconducting cable around the world with a bunch of solar panels en route, yeah, doable. Or any of the other alternatives, perfectly doable. I mean, even nuclear can be perfectly safe if the reactors are designed properly and well and, you know, people don't cut corners and try and make a fast buck by making the things cheaper. But yeah, so, although I started on a bit of a Debbie Downer, I'm going to end on a Hillary High. <laughs> don't know where I came up with that from. I just, you know, this is what happens after an hour and almost an hour and a half of reasonably intense exercise, my brain is just melting. Oh, and there goes a the diesel uh, something in the background. So I'm gonna say goodbye. Hope you enjoyed today's vlog post. If you have, remember to leave a like and share it and subscribe if you haven't already. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. If you don't already, links are in the description. I wanna say a massive thank you to my Patreon supporters because you guys are awesome. And I'll see you all in the next episode of my vlog. Bye.